So welcome to this thir third class of Watercolor for Beginners. And uh, today we are going, I'm going to talk a little bit about the paint. And um, I want to show you the different types of, you know, paint or, or different types of art supplies that you can use. And uh, starting with, I think this is the first, the easiest one to show is this one. So this is a little travel kit. It's called a half box and it's by Windsor Newton. I think one of you has something similar. And these little, uh, each little rectangle here, rectangle, rectangle, this is, is a different color. And uh, when I bought it, all of these, they were all closed and on top you could read the colors and it's actually a test. It's an eye test trying to read those colors. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so what I did is I, when I cut them out, I paste them on a little piece of paper so I would remember what colors exactly I have. Actually, it goes like this. I should spotlight me. Hello, Kevin. Hello. Hi. So, um, so this uh, this is called pained. Uh, colors and uh, the way that they have been put in there there's a special binder that when it's dry then it remains like a little cake and as soon as you wet it then that's when you get your colors and um, if you are like me and you use this a lot then when it becomes when one of the paints become empty like this one for example what you can do is you can take out take the paint the little rectangle, rectangle, uh, the little pane, you can take it out and buy a new one and replace it. Or you can buy a tube of paint, the same color and squeeze it out in there and instant color into your little travel box. Very useful. Um, as you can see, there are certain colors that I hardly ever use. This is green. Uh, two different greens, and this is, uh, I think this is black and white and brown and all yellow ochre, so I hardly ever use these colors. But this is very convenient for traveling, and it has this little sear area here that serves as a palette when you, when you put it like this. And there is a little container here that you can put it on the side like this, and that's where you put your water. And then you have this little extra space here also for mixing colors. So this is a nice little kit that I really like. But sometimes when I travel and I don't know if I will really have time to paint, uh, but I want to make sure that if I do, I have my little kit, then I have, I bring this. This is a small little thing. It's got a cover like this, that when you open it up, then you can mix your paint in here. And it's got a little brush. This little brush is, is a little crummy brush, but anyway, you can still use this so you can bring a brush on the side. So this is very light. It's got some colors that, not the, the colors that I usually use, but it works. And so when I went to Italy and I didn't know if I would paint every day, I always had this in my pocketbook. And with it, I had my little book like this. And I could do little drawing or little painting. See, I did the I did the drawing of the beach, and then I did the painting of the beach. So you can do stuff that's quite interesting, even with a little kit like this. Or there's this little format, same same little things. Very convenient, very light. You just throw it in your pocketbook, and then you're ready. As long as you have your book, and I always have my book. So another travel kit that I like to use, oh, someone else is just joined, Linda, uh, is this one. This one has a little cover that, that it screws on. So it gives you the palette right here. And in this one, there is the yellow, the red, the blue, the brown, the white, and the black. And so this is pretty convenient. It's also very nice little travel kit. Bought this at Van Gogh Gear right here, downtown Law. Uh, but they also have it at other stores. Now, this here com actually comes with, it's got one 
uh, one little uh, panes of colors that is the reds and the browns, one that is the, the blues and the grays, and one that is all the greens. So all of them, they all, they all come together like this. And this one is the one on top. And then you can just put the cover. And now you have a little kit like this. That is so cute. Yes. This is a little heavier to have it in your pocketbook at all times. But it's also a very nice travel one. And sometimes when I know that I will paint, then I bring the, you know, the three primary colors, blue, red, and yellow. So I bring this one. And maybe I'll just bring the red ring. Or if I know that I'm going to do a lot of trees, then I can just bring, you know, the top and the green. And voila, I have my kit. I thought I'd show you this because this is this is it's it's good to know that all of these things exist. And I have done things like this with this also on the trip. So this time I had a smaller, bigger book. It's it's a multi whoops, multimedia uh, book. So it's not the best to do watercolor, but you know, just to capture a little scene, it's kind of cool. That's beautiful. Let's see if I have another one to show you. Oh, on a different day, get this one. Wow. It was a windy day. <laughs> um, and, you know, with these little kits, what I had done, I went to one of my friend's place and he had a garden. So I captured the uh, flower. So with these little kits, you can do this. Now, most of you did uh, buy like what I have here uh, for painting in my studio, which is tubes of paint. So uh, this is what I buy. Uh, these colors are uh, professional for professional colors for the most part. And in this case, I bought the Winsor Newton uh, colors. But um, Winsor Newton also has more of a student grade, which is like this slightly different in terms of presentation. So these silver tubes are more professional grade. This is more a student grade. Uh, and the student grade works really well for this class. I also sometimes buy Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith uh, Extra Fine Watercolors has a lot of pigment in it, but it's extremely expensive. And, and so is this. Uh, I find that... Um, Groombacker Academy is a good brand for, uh, it's in student grade, but it's a very good brand. It's got a lot of pigment in those tubes. And for the size, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good quality. Um, now to put the paint in. So um, what I do have is something like this. This is quite convenient. It's got a lot of little wells where I can put my colors and I can make new colors in these little welds. Let's say I mix the yellow and the red, then I can make my orange here. Uh, if you have a dog at home and he's barking, if you could please mute yourself and then you can unmute when, uh, when you are not, uh, when you want to talk. So I also use something like this. So this has a lot of wells. And if you ever see a professional artist, uh, watercolorist, sometimes they will have a different color for each in each of these wells, you know. And uh, I tend not to suggest, you know, I tend to suggest to students to just buy one blue, one red, and one yellow for the beginner's class. This is plenty enough to do a lot of beautiful paintings. And also it's plenty enough to learn, you know, how to mix your colors. And um, this was given to me by someone else. This person even wrote down, you know, the different colors that they have in the different little panes. But with something like this, you can squeeze out the paint into the little uh, wells. And there is a plenty of area surface to mix the colors in, in here. And this is also convenient because it's got a cover. Uh, and then it keeps the paint wet for, for a long time. But 
this is not necessary for this class. And um, now do you, do you guys have any questions about any of the paint or any of the supplies I showed you today? Nope. All righty then. So we're gonna move on to painting. Today, because I do have a little syllabus that I prepared for myself uh, so that you know I, I would know what I teach you every day. And today, um, I want us to use wet on wet technique. So wet on wet means you wet the paper and when you paint, you paint with a wet brush. Next week, we're going to do dry on dry. But this week, we're trying wet on wet. And to do that, um, we're going to start with the same thing that we always start with is a blank page uh, that is divided in four. So if you don't have one ready, now's the time to prepare it. So uh, we're gonna start with the start. And um, what, do you, we, what do you, we usually have to do before we, pet, we, uh, we wet the paper. Here are okay. the paints. Uh, Sarah, I think you- Prepare the paints? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what color do we wanna do first? Uh, let's, let's venture off of those primary colors. How about if we were to paint green? How do we make green? Yellow and blue. Yellow and blue, yes. So let's prepare a nice green. And that's what I'm gonna do right here. So to prepare my green, I'm gonna get some of my, where's my brush that I used? Oh, well, lost it. So uh, to prepare some of my nice green, I'm gonna put some yellow in my little, uh, my area where I want to uh, make my mix. So I have some nice yellow here. And I'm also going to uh, put some blue in this little cubby. There. Now, if you don't have a, a pane like this to, to, to mix it, then you can prepare your green in a little pane like this. That will work too. But I like to show you here so you can see better. So now I have my blue. And as you can see, I'm not waiting the whole thing. I'm just waiting a little portion of my blue. Very wet, nice. This is still very thick, but this area here is, is wet. Now I'm completely cleaning my brush and I'm gonna wear a little piece of my yellow. I'm not waiting the whole thing, just, uh, just a part of it. So if you're doing this in a well, then make it a watery. <laughs> and now if I mix the two together, that's when I will see, I will create my green. Now, if I want the green lighter, then I put more yellow, more of light, it'll be more like, like a lime green. If I want it darker, then I'm gonna put some more blue in it. So now see in between, I've gotten a nice, beautiful green right here in between. Now I gotta make sure that I've mixed enough of the paint. Uh, and we're gonna start by trying to do a flat wash of the grain. So you have to have enough of your grain prepared so that you don't run out. But it's a very watery green that I prepared. So it's gonna be a light green. Even though it looks pretty dark here, when I put it on, on the page, because I will wet the page first, it will become pretty, pretty light in color. So now I'm gonna use my nice flat brush like this and wet the area here, dip in here in my, in my green and just go do a flat wash. Now you can watch the demonstration first 
and then and then do it after or if you want to do it at the same time as me then you can wait while the others do it after all right so i'm i have this clean water here i'm going to wet my paper and i'm like i said last week i'm working vertical but i suggest that you work more flat with maybe a little incline so that um, your water and your paint doesn't drip like this. But so you can see it on the camera. That's why I have it inclined like this on vertical. All right, so now I've wet my paper, it's very wet. And I dip my brush into all of the color that I've prepared. And it might be a flat wash, it might be a graded wash, but let's see what happens. Look at this, how light it is in color. Wow, beautiful green. There, so now if I put it flat, it will dry flat. Now what happens if I use a little bit more yellow? So now I'm dipping into the yellow like this. Now this yellow is pretty thick. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna put this here. Just here at the top. And now what happens if I now dip into the blue? That's pretty thick. And I'm just gonna put this at the bottom. Right here, just the width of the, it's like one inch. Now what's happening, because it was still wet, it's not creating a very, um, a very sharp, uh, sharp line here. And this was even more wet. But see how much of, how little of the, of a line we get. And here it's a little bit more of a line because it was already uh, a little bit more wet. Now I will give you some time to try this. So to make the orange, I'm gonna get some of the ultramarine. Now I'm putting it here, okay? And using some water, I'm gonna wet a portion of it, but not all of it. Cause I want to come, I want to have one area that's very watery. So this area here that I'm working on, but this here still has a lot of pigment. It's as thick as when I took that out of the tube. So once I have this, then I clean my brush. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm gonna get some of this nice canyon yellow media. And getting some water from my bucket, I'm gonna water down some a little part of this yellow color, make it very watery. And so I have this very watery yellow here, very watery red here. This red is still very pigment. It's as thick as it, it came out of the tube. And this portion of my yellow is also still very thick. So now I'm gonna mix the two to get a nice orange. I like my orange with more, you know, a darker color, then I put more red. If I like it with a lighter color, then I put more yellow. Now make sure that you mix enough of it so that uh, you can cover the whole little quarter page. And maybe you're like me, you didn't have enough yellow. So I'm dipping into the rest of this yellow. But it's important that you still have some of the yellow that is still completely pigment. So I'm gonna clean my brush and get a little bit more of this yellow that is still very thick. You can see that. Yeah, that's good. All right, so now my orange is ready. And we're gonna proceed the same way on this, on this square. So using my big brush, Let's say I use a brush that's a little smaller. So let's say I'm gonna use this brush this time. I like you to use my big brush, but 
I know some of you don't necessarily have one. So I'm gonna use this brush and I'm gonna work in this area here. So dipping into my clean water, uh, I'm gonna completely wet this with a lot of water. That's good. Okay, and now that it's all wet, I'm gonna dip my brush into my orange that I prepared right here, this. Make sure you, you have enough of this nice orange on your brush. And I'm gonna paint the whole thing with the orange. Well, mine's dripping because I have it vertical. So I'm going, so if I let this dry, it will dry flat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna dip into my red right here, this red, and I'm gonna do just one swoop up here with my red. Nice. And now I'm gonna dip into my yellow. Tissues. All this yellow. And I'm gonna do one swoop here. Voila. So mine is dripping here. You don't want that. But look how it gives a nice finish of, you have the very light red in the middle. And here at the bottom, because we started with the red and I didn't clean my brush again, even though I dipped into the yellow, it remained orange because uh, there is so much red in my brush. So it gives a different effect. And as you're doing this, one of the uh, things that my painting teacher recommended when I was in art school, that was quite a long time ago, but anyway, uh, she recommended that when trying to do exercises uh, with different colors, then uh, you know after class, you take a moment to write down a couple of sentences in your journal. You can do an art journal and say, wow, Painting with the orange is like, it really made me feel, feel calm and relaxed and I really enjoyed it. But when we had to paint with the blue, ooh, made me very nervous. So maybe you're, you would discover for yourself which are the colors that you like most and that you feel the most relaxed with. It's very important to discover that for yourself because everybody is different, each artist has their own favorite colors and the colors that they prefer to paint with and that they would tend to gravitate towards. I found out while I was doing my homework. So I wanna bring your attention now on this compared to this. And the reason is, of course it's two different colors, but the reason I wanna bring your attention to it is look at, you know, here, how the difference between the light and the dark is somewhat of a smooth transition. We can clearly see the line, uh, but it's not a very sharp line. Look at this transition here. It's all zigzag, can you see? Mm -hmm. And the reason that this happened like this uh, is because this portion was still very, very wet. And in this portion of the, of the painting, uh, it had very little pigment. Whereas here at the bottom, I put a lot of pigment. I loaded it with pigments. So because my, my uh, canvas or my paper was vertical, then the water keep, kept going down, but it was stopped by the pigment 
and not stopped equally. So that's why I created this. So learning how to do different effects, like maybe no line at all, or like here, no line at all, or a smooth line or a zigzagged line, this comes with practice. Mm. And it also, it's something that, you know, the more you paint, the more you will exercise and you will uh, learn how to do this. But I want us this time to work with the other elements that we have in the color wheel. And we'll be working with what is, what is made by mixing the blue and the red. And some of us have already done that, but nevertheless, the rest of us will also exercise that. <laughs> Linda, she's, she's ahead of us. Um, so we're gonna do purple. Now to make purple, uh, depending on the quality of paint you have and the brand, it might, might take less red and more blue or maybe more red and less blue. But anyway, you'll have to make your own mix. And um, this time we're not gonna do exactly the same as we did here. Um, we're going to do from top to bottom. And actually maybe we will do from top to bottom this way. So we're gonna prepare the color in the, in the space here. And if you don't have any more space on your palette, then you should just clean it. Like for example, uh, I take my wet brush and then I can just, you know, Clean this like this, take a paper towel and just wipe it, wipe it clean. So this way I have a clean surface to work. So this is just, if you didn't, if you don't have any more space to work, you should clean a space. So this way you won't get the purple when you're not supposed to, or, you know, get some color that you don't want uh, mixed in with the mix that you're gonna do. So this is just an example of how to clean this. Now I'm going to work right here. This is a nice white spot. So this time what we're going to do is we will try to create a gradation that will go from a very watery blue to an indigo to a very deep dark purple. So to prepare the colors for this, this is what I recommend. So I take my brush, very thin little brush that I have, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get this uh, nice blue. Uh, you have to have enough of it. So this nice blue here, and I'm gonna also put some nice red on the other corner so that I'm ready. Now, if you have something like this that you're working with, uh, what I recommend is that you do one that will be a very watery blue, one that will be blue with just a little bit of red that is a little thicker. And then one, well, this one's red, but this one would be very thick red and blue that will be a nice purple and it will be the consistency of uh, toothpaste. Very, like, or, or maybe not just toothpaste, but maybe like vegetable oil that you'll put in your, in your salad. All right, so now I'm gonna use, I'm gonna put some red here. That's quite thick. Still have some in here. Yes, okay. All right, so I have the two colors that I will use to prepare my mix. This is the red. And this is the blue. So now I clean my brush. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna create this nice, very watery blue. So that's what I'm gonna create here. I'm not using all that I put here. I'm just using a little bit of pigment to prepare this. Now I'm gonna use some more pigment that I'm gonna put right here. See how this pigment is not watery very much. 
Now in here, I'm gonna use just a little bit of the red. So the color that you're gonna get is an indigo. So if I put the, I'm gonna put uh, each of these colors on my testing strip and then I will show them at the end. So this is the indigo, this is the blue. And then I'm gonna do a purple that will be very thick, like the consistency that will be very, very thick. You don't have enough of the pigment, the blue pigment. So this is not, this is not to be too runny. Okay, so this is my nice purple. So now if you look here uh, on this, so the blue is just blue with a lot of water and it's very watery, very thin. The indigo is blue with just a little red and it's a little thicker than this, but it still has some water in it. And this will be your purple, so that I added even more red, and it will be a pretty, uh, a pretty dark color. So as a result here, I'm ready to paint, and I have this that's very watery, see it's running down this way. This is not running too much, but it does have some water in it, so it's the blue with just a little bit of the red. And in here, there's a lot of pigment, from here with the red, and this is my purple. So using these colors, I'm gonna paint this. So the first step is to wet my paper with the clean water. I go like this so you can see. So I wanna wet my paper. And um, I'm gonna demonstrate this and then I'll give you time to do it. I just wanna make sure that, because when you start doing this, then you have to finish. You can't just interrupt and look and you have to do it in one go. So once your paper is wet and that you let it dry a little bit, um, then what you do is with your big brush. So if you have a brush like this is good, uh, the one that I was using earlier would be good. If you have a brush, a nice round big brush like this, that would be good too. But if you only have a little one like this, then that's what you gotta use. I'm gonna use my one inch. So I'm gonna dip this into the watery blue and start up here. like this, all the way to the half. Then I dip it into the indigo, which is the one in the middle. And now with this, I'm gonna start in the middle, go back up a little bit, and then continue down. Then I'm gonna take a little bit more water on my brush dip into my dark purple and start right at the bottom with that. Go back up. Voila. So now we've created a nice gradation that is like a water. And if I wanted to, you know, do a little bit of um, uh, the lines in the water, I could use a paper towel with this little card, like it's like a business card and create a nice line like this. No, no, I should go like this. This is better. While it's still wet, you go like this. Thank you. It was, I did it wrong actually. 
but it's very interesting. So if I did it straight, that would be better. You know, maybe I'll put one on this side. All right, I will give you some time to try this. Now, did you notice how this looks like water? And it almost looks like we have the sky here, you know, cause this is so light and this is like, like the water that comes towards us. So we're gonna add land to this. Whew. Now to add land, what color do we need? How we do we need make brown? brown? Blue, blue and green. Yeah, so to make brown, basically you can just use two complementary colors. Meaning, if I were to mix red and green, that would give me brown. If I were to mix blue and orange, it would give me brown. If I were to mix yellow and purple, it would also give me brown. But we, I mean, I, if you didn't clean your palette, you have some orange on your palette. And if you don't have any, you can, you can make some new orange uh, by mixing or yeah, yellow and red. And into there, you can put a little bit of blue and it will give you a beautiful brown. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to do this land. And then you guys are gonna try it, yay. Okay, so first I'm going to make uh, some nice orange here. Now to make this orange, you want to make an orange that is not too runny. You don't want to have too much water in this color because when you put it on, your, on top of the other color, you don't want it to run. So in this orange, I'm gonna add a little blue Now look at this, I'm getting instant brown. I'm gonna put it on my test strip. Mm, it's giving me this beautiful rich brown. Mm -hmm. And if I put even more blue, then it's gonna give me a little darker brown. So these are the colors that I've got. And because this is so small, the face that we're painting, then, you know, uh, we don't have to pre-wet this. So I'm dipping into this beautiful brown that I made. And I'm just going to make a little land like this. And um, oh, like so. Now I have this. Put too much water. Okay, and then uh, my tree. Let's say my trees. It's me. Let's say it's the fall. So I'm making my trees kind of like uh, orangey. And then uh, we also work with green, so you can make a nice pine tree there with the nice green that we have. So if you don't have any more, you can just make some more with the blue and the yellow. Now make sure you don't make it too watery. And to paint a little pine tree, you can just go like this. There we go. Now we have a little pine tree. I'm gonna make a little one here too. Now, as you paint nature, you wanna make sure that you have variations. Some are smaller, some are bigger. Maybe I've got another little one here, a little skinny one. This one will be. It's got a little companion right next to it. And now I have this that needs to reflect in my water. Oh my God. So the reflection in the water has got to be the same color. But this time, um, the way that I 
let's say could be done is you can just go like this. To the side of the brush. And then the tree is like this. What's important is that your reflection is in line with the tree. So if I have a tree here, then the reflection is here. And this is my land. So excuse me, Claire. Yes. The camera needs to be tilted up a bit. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, what's important is that your, your tree be in line with the reflection. I'm just using the same color for the reflection. So now I have this little tree here and the tree will be, the reflection will be, you know, uneven and little scattered like so. So now we have a little land. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. Now your turn. So to add the faraway mountain, the faraway mountain will be just a sliver of a mountain. And uh, we're going to make this mountain uh, like a very light purple color. So I'm going to use some of this purple that I have in here. And I'm gonna wipe, wipe my, my, my brush a little bit on my paper towel because I don't want too much of it. And then on here, I'm gonna put this mountain. Now the bottom part has got to be very, very straight. And the top part is where the movement happens. So this is pretty small. And now see how it completes it. Now we have the impression that the water goes around this little island all the way to this mountain back there. So try that, try to add this. Now this far away mountain does not have a reflection because it's way too far away to have a reflection. We did the landscape this way. Now we're gonna turn our paper and do the landscape this way. And as a result, we're gonna get something like this, either like this or no, not this, not this. This is something else. But see, these are all examples of what we are going to get. So it's water at the bottom, sky. So the sky is a flat wash. The water is a graded wash. And then this is just a little bit of different colors that, um, that we put there to make it appear like if it's a um, trees. And same, this is the same thing, but now this, in this case, see how the water is a lot lighter, but it works. And, and it's a lot more red here at the bottom, there it's more purple, but it works, it reads really well. And on this one, I actually painted on something else on top of something else. But anyway, it worked just the same. You can also add little trees that are just little sliver. So we have a choice. I could do a demonstration of this nice little scene right here. And then after that, I'll give you the rest of the time that's available to do it. Or I don't do a demonstration and you do it immediately. Demonstration or no demonstration? Those who want a demonstration, thumb up. <laughs> One, two, three. And Kevin, we don't know. Oh, yes, four. Okay, so I'll do a little demonstration. So I'm gonna paint the whole thing. And then, and then after it won't take long. And then after that, you'll have the rest of the time to do it. So the top part 
is going to be uh, a flat wash. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start by wetting my paper. Ooh, this is too wet, too wet, too wet. I'll dry it a little bit. Okay, this will be better. I had too much water on my brush. Okay, and now I'm gonna start with a flat wash of blue at the top. So I'm just, uh, so a flat wash of the nice blue here at the top. This will be my sky. Okay, now I'm going to continue, but this time I'm going to do a very watery purple color. This is what I'm going to continue with, and without putting any kind of separation, I'm going to do the purple right here, very watery, and I'm going to continue with uh, the blue and purple with a little bit more pigment and even more pigment here and the purple down here. Nice. Now I'm going back up a little bit and that will be my water. And so I have my sky and then my water down here I'm going to try and do my trick with the paper towel to put the line. So I'm using a smaller piece of, of um, paper towel. This is just a business card. I wrap it around my paper towel and see how thin it is. I'm going to be very careful and do the line. Yes, that works really well. Do another line here completely horizontal. So now I have my lights. And one thing that I can also do, which we didn't do in our previous, uh, not previous one, but we're gonna do here. I'm gonna prepare a little bit of brown by mixing uh, orange in, and blue. And using, actually, have uh, this is good. Will this be good? What I like to use, can't find it. Ah, this is just a little cutout of a piece of watercolor paper, and I'm going to use this to paint with, like so. So I'm I'm putting this in my paint, and I'm just going to put some little. It's like there are some little twigs there at the bottom, like this. This is an interesting little twist at the end. All right. And uh, now the next step is to put my land. So I'm going to start by putting my faraway mountain. So the faraway mountain is a uh, light. It's a light purple, but it's darker than this. So it'll be about like this. this is what I have here. And I'm just going to put my faraway mountain. Let's see. It's going to be here like this. So that's my faraway mountain. And now using my brown that I made for this. I'm going to put my land. Now the land is usually flat at the bottom. Doesn't he have to be too, too wavy? And I'm going to add my trees. So the trees, it can be you know, you can have the tree trunk like this. Uh, but the tree could be basically any color. I'm making it kind of brownish. And then I'm going to add the next tree. It's going to be kind of green like this. Wow. Maybe there's another green right next to it. 
another tree like this. And uh, maybe there was a little one here too, like so. And uh, more of the brown tree. Uh, so over here, perhaps. So a tree doesn't have to be precisely painted and certainly not all specific uh, leaves separately. And I'm going to, I'm going to finish by adding a happy tree from Bob Ross. So I'm just going to do a little, just a little tree like this. Maybe one down here, it's happy. And, uh, and a pine tree, maybe one over here. There, pine tree is basically just a cone. Oh, maybe there's another one here. Okay, all of this has got to reflect now into my water, in my brush. Take my brown and I'm going to make this reflect like this. I'm leaving just a little space of white in between. And that shows that um, by leaving a little space of white, that's where the water meets the land. Sometimes it creates a little ripple which is what I want to show. And then I have my tree reflecting here. This is the brown one. And then this one has a little green in it. And then we have a couple of really green ones, like so. So we have this. And this. And then we have the darker ones. That will be a little bit more pigment. Like, like so. Now, tree never reflects completely straight. So it will be more like this. And then there is a pine tree here. And this one we this one here. And then this other one here. All right. And you know what happens sometimes too? The ripples are sometimes a little bit uh, there's there's sometimes a little dark. So I'm gonna put a little ripple here that would be dark. There, like this. Any questions? So your homework will be to do a half page of a landscape like this. And I didn't do this one, but the other half page, you could, you could do a landscape like this. So the same scene, but in two different perspectives. So see, this is the scene that we're doing 